John chapter 6, John chapter 6, John chapter 6, verse 59, John chapter 6 and verse 59, and once you've found it, let's all stand as we read the word of God this evening, John chapter 6 and verse 59. Who's warm in here tonight? Anybody warm in here? Let me see the hands that are warm. Who is comfortable right now? You say, this is perfect, preacher. Who, anybody cold in here tonight? If you're cold, you got problems. And you got problems, I'm just telling you. But, and so do you back there. But anyway, yeah, I'm just I'm dying up here. It's warm. And the new building, if, if I'm right, right, Brother Steve? We're going to be okay. If it's not, it's Brother Steve's fault. I'm just letting you know right now. And, um, and so if it's not good, you just don't look at me. I'm just pointing it at somebody else. But, and, um, but anyway, John chapter 6, verse 59. If you have it, give a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 59, these things said he in the synagogue as he taught in the Capernaum, that he is talking about Jesus Christ. Many, therefore, of his disciples. So now I want you to follow this. These were saved people, his disciples. When they heard this saying said, this is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it. He said unto them, doth this offend you? What? And if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. Let me stop right here. So Jesus is saying there are some that they call themselves disciples, but they're really not saved. But then notice what he says, and he said, therefore, said, I said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye also go away? I was reading that, and I'm thinking, I'm shaking my head. I'm thinking, this is the Son of God. Yeah. Amen. Right. And people are walking away from the Son of God. Right. Amen. I mean, he didn't say anything that was not true. Everything he said was true. Amen. Amen. And yet they walked away. As a preacher, that's encouraging because sometimes you say the truth and people walk away. That's just part of the ministry. My, I grew up in the ministry and I've been in the ministry my entire adult life. And so I understand that. But, some, but, but when you see that they left Jesus, you kind of scratch your head and thinking, good night. Um, this is the one. Well, you know, this is the Messiah. And so I was reading that and, I, and, I, and, I, and, and, I, and it was kind of strange because when I read my, my, the scriptures every day, I, I kind of I kind of read portions of scriptures. I, I read Old Testament, I read New Testament, and I was reading the New Testament, and then I I was reading another part just a couple of days later, and all this started coming together. It's amazing how the Holy Spirit does that. And I wrote some things down that I wanted to help our church out tonight. And I just want to talk to you tonight on this to this topic: why people quit? Why people quit? Father, take these next few minutes. I thank you for our church, the faithfulness of our church, the hardworking people of our church. My, what you did this morning, Father, I just want to say thank you. Lord, I don't ever want to take for granted the souls that were saved, the people who were baptized and, and the, the, the packed attendance that you gave us. I, I'm thankful for that. But Lord, we come back tonight because we still need to hear from heaven. We still need something from thy word. And I do believe we all have to look at this little topic. Though I don't think we have any quitters in our midst tonight, I want us to be determined that we watch out for what could cause us to quit. Lord, allow me to be a help to your people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. We just read the story of Jesus preaching. Really, he's preaching salvation to this crowd, the religious crowd. 
He's telling them that he is the only way that anybody can get saved. You would think that the disciples would be amening the Savior as he's talking about salvation. Amen. You would think they would say, yep, amen, that's right, preacher, this is true right there. You would think that's what they would be, they would be saying. But here Jesus is preaching to the crowd, and what's interesting is as he preaches to the crowd, they said, this is a what? Hard saying. You know why it was hard? Because it was convicting. You ever hear people say, he's a hard preacher? Why is he a hard preacher? Because he probably nails your sin. Huh? A preacher who never preaches on sin is not a hard preacher. We like him. You know why? He never parks in our living room. Somebody say amen on that right there. But when the preacher comes into your living room and sits down on your couch and starts nailing your sin, isn't it amazing how all of a sudden the inside we start getting stirred up a little bit? And that's what was happening with our Savior. He, he, had, he had parked on their sin, and now they're getting convicted about that, and they became defensive about that. And so here he is, he's preaching, and as he preaches, finally, they, they got so upset with him that the Bible says in verse 66, he, it says, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. I want to just point out one little thing that this is, little, this is just something that kind of jumped out at me. When you look at this verse, so the disciples quit on Jesus in verse 66. Hold on. It's John 6. 66. Yeah, right. I stopped and I thought, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah. Six, six, six. Yeah. The disciples stopped following Jesus. Yeah. You know why? Six, six, six is man's number. Yeah. And they were all about men. Yeah. Nothing about the Savior. Right. Just interest to me. I, I, I don't know if there's anything to that. I just saw that, and I thought, that's quite, that's quite interesting. That yeah. here we are. They got upset with him, and then we come to verse 67, and Jesus looks at the 12. Now, one of the 12 was, was, was Judas Iscariot. He, the Bible says he was, he was he, the, de the devil was going, and Jesus knew it. And he looked at the 12, and he said, he said to them, will ye also go away? You know, I, I think of Brother O'Daniel, who was here for 39 years. And I wonder how many people went away. They really shouldn't have gone away. You know, Brother O'Daniel was a good man. I, he was a good friend of mine, and, and he was a man of God, and, and, I, and he was a straight shooter. I mean, there's no doubt about it. He, he, at the end of his life, he was a little bit softer than he was at the young years of life. You don't believe me? Ask the hard joke land. They could tell you a few things about how, what he was like. You think I'm hard. You didn't sit under Brother O'Daniel, so I'm just telling you, you have to understand. And that's okay. I, I'm not against that. I think it's good. This generation is so soft. This generation's lost that ability to have a little bit of toughness, and somebody saying, hey, we're not going to do this. I mean, we carry our feelings on our shoulder and we, we get all our nose all bent out of shape where what we ought to do is stop and take some inventory and say, maybe I do need to change something. We have some people in our church right now that in the, in the past several months, we've had to say, now you can't do that. And, and, they, and they took it well and they changed. And I like it that when somebody has a moldable spirit and says, don't do that. Now, Brother Harjo does it. I've said, stop like an OU. And he repeats bells against me. I don't get that. I don't get that. Now, but follow me. Follow me now. Do you understand that, that, that Jesus had these people quit on him? My parents raised me not to be a quitter. My dad, I, I ran track. When I was, my dad was my coach in track. And of course, the first year you've heard me tell the story, I, I, my dad, my dad was a cross country runner. Me cross country from the bed to the breakfast table. Somebody's helped me out with that one right there. I, I'm just not a long distance runner. Um, it, it, you know, I just, I, to this day, I'm not going to run long. It's just, you know, okay, we, we did five steps. We're good. But anyway, but, uh, I was not, but my dad said, son, he says, he said, would you run, would you run, would you run the mile for one year? Just, just do it for me. I said, okay, dad, I'll do it for you. And I ran the mile. I hated the mile. I was not good at the mile. I, I think I got fifth place and running the mile. I got fifth place. I was like, I don't like getting fifth place. I, I like getting first place. Somebody help me out with that one right there. And, but, but, he, but he taught me when I was in track. My dad would say, now, son, there's only one reason why you quit. 
He says, that's, he says, you only quit, he says, when you're dead. He says, until then, never quit, never quit. I remember, I remember, I've told this story. I was, I was running the 200 meter and, uh, and I was going around the 200 meter. You have one turn on the 200 meter. And I was, I was on that turn and all of a sudden on the bottom of my foot, I, I felt a pain shoot through the bottom of my foot. And I could tell every time I, my, my foot was hitting that turf, I, I, it was just, it, the pain was shooting through and it slowed me down. I crossed the finish line and when, as soon as I crossed that finish line, I pulled my shoe off and my sock was soaked in blood. I had gone around and it had ripped the flesh off of the ball of my foot. And it, and it was just, it was bleeding. I, I, I'm just, I'm looking at, my, of course, I'm not good with blood either, so I'm looking at my foot. My dad runs over and he says, son, he says, why didn't you quit? I said, because I'm not dead. Amen. Amen. Now, you know what I appreciate about a dad like that? Is that he didn't say, well, son, you could have quit. He didn't say that. But he, he trained me to do right. I think my mama, my mama always taught me never to quit. Amen. If I had if to quit, I think my mama would have given me a reason not to quit. You with me so far? It, my parents trained me not to be a quitter. I remember when my, when my dad was arrested and, and, he, and he went to prison. My dad always taught us not to be a quitter. Yeah. And I thought to myself, I, I always wondered, I wonder if he's going to quit now. I wonder if he's going to quit now. I remember my dad, for a couple months, and I understand it, for a couple months it was like a, like a gut punch. He, he, he didn't do much for a couple months, and then all of a sudden I remember one phone call. Son, I led someone to Christ. Amen. 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 And then, he said, then he, I called back, we called back, son, I was able to lead somebody else to Christ. Amen. Then I heard my dad say, son, he said, I was able to preach on the yard. I got a congregation on the yard. I started preaching on the yard. And I thought about that, and I said, boy, my dad didn't quit. He's in prison. He, 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 he broke a law, and he's there. But he didn't quit. You know, I, I'll, I'll take somebody like that. Over there's a piece of paper right here. Can you get that? I don't know what that is, and it's, I think it's your. It goes to your. I think it's your earring. But anyway, <laughs> I got to stop that stuff. But anyway, but I I, I I I look at Christians who go through such softness and they quit. And I see the I see the apostles in the in the New Testament, and I see how they continue. Can I tell you, quitting is a bad habit. You see, you never, you'll never be a quitter if you don't quit the first time. Amen. Now, I didn't say fail. I didn't say fall down. We all fail. We all have failure in life. But the, I like what, the, what, what, he, what God says in Proverbs. The just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. It's not how many times you fall down that matters. It's how many times you get up that matters. As long as you get up one more time, then you fall down. Then you're not a failure in life and you're not a quitter in life. You don't lay there because you failed. You somehow figure out a way to get yourself back up. There ought to be something inside of every believer that says, my Savior didn't quit. He was hanging on the cross. They gave him every reason to quit, but my Savior did not quit. Thank God. Hey, hey, why? Because quitting's a bad habit. There are some people that quitting has become such a bad habit that they quit and they quit and they quit and they quit and then they wonder why life is the way that it is. It's because they quit. You see, quitting is refusing God's invitation to help you overcome. We don't quit on easy. We quit on hard. It's hard to walk with God. It's hard to live a holy life in a wicked world. Somebody help me out. It's hard to read your Bible every day. It's hard to pray 
every day. It's hard to be a soul winner. It's hard to be a bus worker. It's hard to work in the nursery. Somebody help me out. It's hard to be a Sunday school teacher and to grow your class. And it's hard to be the Christian in today's world. But can I tell you, when it's hard, it's God's invitation to say, get in the yoke with me. Let's overcome this thing together. You see, quitting is denying God's ability and power to help you. It is telling God, God, I don't want your help because I really don't want, I just want to soak in my quitting. Anybody can quit. But few persevere and overcome. You know why, why I'm not afraid to bring sinners into this church? Because one, I am one. And second, I, I, and by the way, and I don't want this church to ever become a Pharisee type of church. Well, we don't want that type in our church. No, no, somewhere there has to be some church in every city where a sinner can come and say, God can still use me there. As long as people are sucking air, they can still be used by God somehow. I like it that we go to Cardinal House and we go to some of the houses and bring people in who are trying to overcome some things inside their life. I like it that we bring in some of those who lay, who live on the streets and we come in and trying to overcome. I like it when we bring some of these bus kids that go, they come to church on Sunday night, ride the bus on Sunday night, and they come there. I like that because they're trying to overcome. They have to go to school. They have friends that don't like God, and yet they come to church on Sunday night. I think of these two young girls right here. Start went soul winning yesterday for the first time, am I correct on that? First time went soul winning, riding the bus on Sunday night, come the bus on Sunday morning. Don't tell me this isn't working. Hey, you can't quit. Yes, it's hard. But who would want everything easy? Let me give you several reasons why people quit, and then let me talk to you a little bit, and then we'll go home and maybe have ice cream. It's starting to warm up outside. I, I, hear, the, I hear the ice cream coming. Amen. Why do people quit? Number one, because of doubt. Because of doubt. You look at verse 64, but there are some of you that, what, believe not. You know what that is? Doubt. You know, when you, when you always push faith out, there's always a reason to quit. One of the reasons why I'm a big believer in faith and preaching on faith and trying to challenge your faith is so that you don't quit. I think of Dr. Lee Robertson, the great preacher of yesteryear. Dr. Lee Robertson, I was told by Dr. by Brother O'Daniel, Dr. Rob Robertson would preach on faith. He'd, he'd talk about faith at least once a week. He was, he was, if you ever know anything about his preaching, he'd always talk about faith. He'd live by faith, live by faith. You got to live by faith. Now, now, don't you quit. Don't you just live by faith. And he, he, that's how he would do it. And he built the great Highland Park Baptist Church in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and God used him mightily there. But but hold on a second now. Here he was, a man of faith, but I'm telling you, you know why? Because faith tells you don't quit. Faith says keep on going. Faith says there's an end to this thing. Faith says there's a light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm saying doubt is a reason why some people quit. They quit because, get this now, because time has elapsed and they still don't see a change. That's what I love about Hebrews chapter 11. These all died in faith, not having received the promises. They kept on going despite not having the promises there. Why? Because they had what? Faith. The day that Maranatha Baptist Church stops living by faith and stops challenging by faith is the day that we become a bunch of quitters. Now, I've got to say, I've got to get the doubt out of my life. Why? Doubt will lead me to quit. There's another thing that leads to quitting. Why do people quit? Second, because they love the world. They love the world. Go, if you would, to uh, to 2 Timothy 4.10. I just want you to see the 2 Timothy 4.10. Paul said, Paul, he's he's talking about some people. Now, you think I'm tough. Paul called them out by name. So don't ever think Alan Domley is a a tough preacher. I have not called you out. Well, I call my son-in-law out by name. I call my father-in-law out by name. But otherwise, they deserve it. But anyway... 
They're in-laws. But anyway, but 2 Timothy 4, 10, it says, For Demas hath forsaken me, having what? Loved this present world. You know why people quit? They love the world more than they love God. Brother Harjo, you pastored for many years. I wonder how many times people came to you and they, they used an excuse to quit, but when they quit, you saw their life change. They went to the world. Always happens. Don't tell me that, that, the, that there's something wrong with the independent Baptist. No, there's something wrong with the worldly lifestyle that you're trying to embrace. That's why you want to quit. Listen to me. We can use the excuses all, the, all day long, but that our love for the world, our love for the world's lifestyle, our love to not to have the pressure of living a holy life. Yes, it's hard to live a holy life, but I'm telling you right now, hey, when I say, okay, I'm gonna live by faith, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna love this world, I'm gonna love my God more than I love this world, then ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you tonight, I won't forsake God in the hard times, I just keep on going forward. Amen. Why is it that people quit? Well, they quit because, because of doubt. Okay, for instance, we've had people leave this church. They have their excuses, but isn't it interesting that they go and they start living like the world? Now, if it was what I'm preaching, then go to another church of like faith. But the fact is, why is it that you want to go to a worldly thing and a worldly event and live like the world? Why do people quit? Because they love the world. Number three, why do they quit? Because they are evil. I'm not saying everybody quits is evil. I'm just saying some people quit because they're evil. Go to 2 Timothy 4.14. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. Anybody that's ever been a minister in the ministry has been attacked, criticized for doing right. But you got to expect it. Because there's evil people out there. Now listen to me. Some, some, you need to get off YouTube. Listen to me. Get off YouTube. Stop listening to the people that want to criticize every preacher. Listen to me. Well, this preacher does this. You listen to somebody. You listen to somebody. Let me ask a question. You have an attitude about that preacher. Did you go to that preacher and ask them? You want to be a Christian about this, that's what the Bible says to do. Had a preacher years, several years ago. I put something out, and I think it was on Twitter, and he, and he, he, he replied back in, a, in, a, in, in kind of attack. Now, I've known this guy since he's a teenage boy. I called him up. I'll, I'll call his name um, uh, what, John. I'll call his name John. I said, John, hey, said, this is Brother Domley. Hey, hey, Brother Domley, how you doing? We began to talk. I said, I got a question for you. So I saw you posted something today. He got real quiet on the other side. Yeah. I said, um, you knew it was me calling me because you said, hello, Brother Domley. I said, so you have my phone number. I said, when's the last time you called me up and asked me about what you're saying about me that you know is not true? He says, well, I said, no, no, there's no well. I said, you've already poisoned several people that you said some things and you never one time called me up. You never one time asked my, the other side of the story. You knew exactly where I was going, but you did what you did because you're evil. He said, I don't think you got to say it about me. I said, well, you said it publicly. I said, at least I'm man enough to call you up. Amen. I said, and by the way, I said, this conversation, I said, I won't tell anybody about what, what, what we're talking about. Come no one's going to know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. Now, listen to me. We, in, in the digital technology, could you imagine if there was Facebook and YouTube in the Apostle Paul's day? Listen to me. The devil has used the technology to destroy Christianity in America. America has enough problems. Why in the world are we trying to destroy our own? Well, someone said, 
And? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Amen. 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 My pastor for many years was Dr. Jack Hiles. I knew him personally. He, 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 he knew me as a, as a baby, and I grew up and not under his ministry, but then later on went to his ministry, worked for him for 13 years. And someone was, someone was criticizing him, and they were saying that he does this and he does this, and finally I just let him talk for a while. Then I stopped and I looked at them and I said to them, I said, Brother Dory, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't supposed to say that. I said, let me ask you something. I said, have you ever met Brother Hiles face to face? No. Have you ever been in his church? No. I said, so everything you're saying, where are you getting the information? Well, somebody else told me. I said, now that's real just. I said, how about if I say about you what everybody says about you? I said, fact is, you're going off what somebody else has said. I said, I think you'd be wise just to take care of your ministry and do what you're supposed to do instead of trying to destroy someone that you don't even know. I don't agree with everybody, but I'm not going to, listen, I'm not out to destroy everybody. There's people going to hell, and we've got to reach it, and this doesn't help. Why do people quit? Because they get caught up in a wrong cause? Kind of what we're talking about. 2 Timothy 4, 16, at my first answer, no man stood with me, but all forsook me. Paul said, man, I, he said, I was doing right, and all of a sudden, everybody's gone. Looking around, and I'm trying to figure out, where, where, are, where is everybody? No, he said, at the first. At the first. I've learned, I, I'm 53 years young. You can say amen on the young side. Don't worry about the 53 part. <laughs> I've learned in all these years of ministry that if I just stay quiet, and respect men of God that God takes care of his own. If they're wrong, God will take them down. If they're right, God will bless them. But I'm not going to be the one. I'm not going to get caught up in an agenda to destroy another man. I'm not going to do it. People quit. Well, I heard this and I heard that. That's your problem. You heard the wrong thing. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. How much time have you spent praying about that? Amen. How much time have you spent studying the word of God about that? Amen. Now, now somewhere we've got to we gotta start getting back to this book right here and understanding that there is a that something called the local church. God takes care of things inside the local church, not inside YouTube. Amen. Why do people quit? Number five, because of fear. Fear. Matthew 26, 56 says, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Why did the disciples um, forsake Jesus at the cross? They were afraid. The fear of the what if. Well, what if this happens? Well, it didn't happen. You don't have to die for the sins of mankind. They were after Jesus. Yeah. One of the reasons why we kept on going forward during COVID, because I didn't want us to quit on God. Yeah. 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 I want us to keep going. Yeah. Oh, we tried our best to do it right. We, we sanitized it, but we still sanitize the building after every service. Right. Miss M.M. does a wonderful job on Sunday afternoons. I don't even know how she keeps her eyeballs open Sunday night. Yeah. But she'll go, through this, she'll go through this auditorium every Sunday afternoon and sanitize this auditorium, get it ready for Sunday night. And then we have other people that go through on Thursday and on Monday and clean out the building and make sure everything's ready for the next service. Now, why didn't you quit? Because fear will stop us in a heartbeat. You can't, we've got to let faith drive us. Yeah. Yeah. Why do people quit? Because they listen to false teaching. Paul said in Galatians 5, 7, ye did run well. Who? Who? 
did hinder you? You say what's false teaching? Anything against this book? Amen. Listen to me. Alan Domley is not the authority. This book is the authority. Now, my job is to preach this book. That's my job. How many times have you heard me say, and you don't, I don't say it a lot, but how many times have you said, this is a little bit of Domleology. That's just my opinion. Well, my opinion is not doctrine. Somebody help me out. This book is doctrine. What this book says overrides Alan Domley. And I've got to understand, okay, I, I, I don't, we've got to be careful about listening to false. Why do people quit? Number seven, because of conviction. Jesus said in John 6, 60, he said, they said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? What was it? Conviction. Amen. I found the best, the best response to conviction is not to quit. It's to get right. Yeah. Come on now. That's good. Yeah. Get right. Yeah. Why quit? Right. Amen. Why do people quit? Because they're offended. Matthew 24, 10, and, they, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Oh, listen to me. We get offended. Well, they offended me. And let me tell you something. You're, you're going to be offended if you hear at Maranatha Baptist Church. You say, why? We're a busy church. But God says in Psalm 119, 165, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Now, how do I keep from... Quitting, preacher. I'm going to give you six statements, and we'll be done. We'll go home and have ice cream. Brahms ice cream. One, not bluebell. Brahms. I'm pointing out the liberals right back there. Now, how do I keep from quitting? One, if you're looking to leave, you will find a reason to leave. Brother Melvin, you've been here a long time. That doesn't mean you're old. You've just been here a long time, but it probably means you're old. <laughs> if you're looking for a reason to leave, I'm sure you could have found it. I'm sure there's times that you and Brother Daniel disagreed. I'm sure there's been times you've probably not agreed with me. I don't know. He's never told me. Yeah. Right. Amen. Well, listen, if you're looking for a reason, you'll always find a reason to leave. Right. 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 Always. Yeah. Because once a person gets to that point, it doesn't matter what the other side does. It's never good enough. Amen. Once you've made the mind, your mind up, I'm leaving. Doesn't matter. They could say, hey, they could say you're the best person since Jesus Christ. But you're, you're going to, oh, you're just trying to flatter me. So you've got to say, okay, if I'm not going to quit, I've got to say I'm not going to look to leave. Number two, take quit out of your options. Take quit out of your options. Quitting is not an option. Overcoming is an option. Praying is an option. Persevering is an option. But quitting is not an option. There's times I, I, I want to quit. I said, nope, we've got to overcome. I want to quit. No, got to persevere. Want to quit? No, let's pray. Want to quit? No, let's go soul winning. Want to quit? Just keep going forward. I don't know when I get to the other side, but I know this. The way to overcome quitting is just say, I got to take quitting out of my options. Amen. Amen. When I'm counseling people in their marriage, the first question I ask them, and we don't go past this right here, I ask them, is divorce an option? That's my first question. If they say divorce is an option, I say, then this session is done. Because as long as that's an option, I can't help you. But once you throw that out, now we can work because the, the option is work through it. Work through it. If I'm out in the middle of the ocean and... Oh, he's Brother Ahmad, he's mean. And uh, Brother Ahmad, he throws me overboard. But he's nice enough to give me a life preserver. You know what I'm going to do instead of trying to swim back to shore? I'm going to grab that life preserver. But if he throws me overboard and says, see you later, I'm going to figure out a way to swim back to shore. Somebody help me out. 
Now, you in your marriage and you in your life, in your Christian life, stop having a life preserver of divorce and quit and say, no, sir, we're going to make it to shore. My good friend, Dr. Don Chitty, missionary up in the Navajo, he's a Marine. He said the hardest part about the training, he was a Marine recon. He said the hardest part about the training was when they took us out to the middle of the ocean. He says they poured oil around the boat. Threw us overboard. He says once they got out from outside of the oil, they lit the oil. He said we had to figure out a way to get back to shore. He said the boat left. He says it was either make it or die. Yeah. And you've got to determine, I'm going to serve God Amen. or die trying to serve God. Yeah. Quitting's not an option. You know what I love about Brother O'Daniel? He didn't quit. He didn't quit. He had cancer. Y'all remember the last sermon had the chair up here. Preach sitting in a chair, hanging on to the pulpit. Didn't have the strength to do much, but he stood up, he sat here, and he preached his last sermon. Why? What a quitter. Now, there ought to be something inside of us that says, don't quit. How do I keep from quitting? Third, can I just tell you, realize you're in a busy church and you're going to have disagreements. We had some disagreements this week. But it's not a purpose to quit. We're just busy. You're in the middle of a spiritual warfare. The devil's fighting. He's going to try to get us to rub our, rub our attitudes against each other. And, and maybe the other person's wrong, but that's not a, listen to me, we're in a busy church. We've got to say, okay, I've got to go beyond that. I've got to go beyond that. How do I keep from quitting? Number four, fall in love with God's word. Great peace have they which love thy law. And nothing shall offend them. When I so fall in love with this, I don't get offended. So when I do get offended, that tells me I'm not loving God's book the way I need to love it. Somebody help me out. And we've all been there, including Alan Domley. And when I get offended, i got to stop. How much do I love God's word? How do I keep from quitting? I love this one. Invest. Invest, yeah. Matthew 6, 21, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I've learned this. When I invest in people, I'm willing, okay, God says love covereth a multitude of sins. Here's people. Preacher, why don't you give up on them? No. Don't they irritate you? Yes, you do. I mean, I mean yes, You say, why won't you give up? I've invested too much in them. Right. Remember I asked my pastor, Brother Howes, years ago, there was preachers attacking another preacher. And, and that preacher, I'd been around him for, me, for as a young child, and, and he, I respected him. I said, Brother Howes, I don't understand it. I said, what, what? I said, I don't know what to do. And he said, Brother Donnelly, he says, yes, there's men around me that want me to, to stop preaching with him and just cast him out. But he, he made the statement. He says, but I've invested too much in the man. These men haven't invested in him. I have. You know, I've learned if I invest in these young children that come to church on the bus, I'm going to be willing to say, okay, you know what? Well, I'll work with them because they're good young people. Got a terrible bus captain, but good young people. <laughs> invest. Why would you invest and tremble? I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, invested too much. 
I've learned my answer, the answer to not trying to kill people is just invest in them. The more I invest in people, the more I'm not wanting to quit on them. But they're up and they're down and they're up and they're down. There's a couple here this morning that hadn't been in church in a long time and, and we've invested a lot in them. Why don't you quit? Because I've invested too much. Amen. When you invest in people, you don't give up on people. Come on now. The reason why we give up on people is because we we've never invested anything. How do I keep from quitting? Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes, That's it. I can't do it under my own power. I'm flesh. I am absolutely flesh. But there's a power that lives within me. I can say, listen, people may say mean things about you, but when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, he'll help you to love this book right here because the Holy Spirit points you to truth. Yes. Truth is that book right there. They eat great peace and they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. So if he points me to truth, then I'll not be offended. And I invest and invest and invest and invest and not quit. Let me ask you, aren't you glad somebody didn't quit on you? There's people in this church right now I'm praying for a little bit more because I'm concerned for them. Amen. Really concerned for them. I've seen them back up. Their spirit's not the same as it used to be. But I've invested too much in them. And I'll say, God, I'm not, I'm not willing to give up on them. I'm glad the Holy Spirit says back, well, I'm not either. Preacher, do you ever get tired? I do. But as soon as I do, I just say, okay, I, I need to invest a little bit more in them. I need to pray. I need to fall in love with this book a little bit more. Yeah. Quitting can't be my option. Right. Because someone didn't give up on me. Yeah. Right. And I think I'm not going to give up on somebody else. Yeah. But they've done something bad and you haven't you just didn't get caught so until then I choose to be like my savior despising the shame he was crucified had every reason to quit on us could have called 10,000 angels but he says, I came to finish what I started. Amen. Now, why don't you become a finisher? Yeah. A finisher. Amen. Don't give up on people. I was talking to someone this week. I, I can't remember who it was. I said, you know, they say that, they say that the ministry would be wonderful if it wasn't for people. But there'd be no ministry if it wasn't for people. And I love people. And I know everybody has, we all have our little kinks. We joke a lot with Brother Stafford. But I love he and his wife and I appreciate them and their faithfulness. Keeps on going. Yeah. Amen. Invest in people, Father. I'm so glad that you didn't ever quit. You did everything you could. But you don't give up on us. Lord, I pray that tonight we'd become a people that just determine we're not going to be quitters, but we will invest in people. We're going to put, quit out of, the, out of the book and just determine to go forward. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I wonder who's in.